Today, I'm going to let you in on a little secret which enabled me to go from creating GYs that looked like this to looking like this. You want to hear something crazy? I promise that by the end of this video, you'll no longer be using Roblox Studio to create your GUIs. Now, with how much praise I'm giving this tool, I do want to clarify that I am not sponsored by them. Even though they haven't sponsored me, you sure can by visiting monster.dev or my Patreon. When you subscribe to either of these two sites, you'll be able to download multiple games, tons of scripts, packs of pets, icons, GUIs, and much, much more. We even have free assets available to you as well, so go check it out if you're interested. And with that being said, let's hop right into the video. The secret that I was referring to earlier in the intro is actually this tool called Figma. Figma is a web application made for UI design. When you see this website, depending on how familiar you are with Figma, you might be a little bit overwhelmed. You might be thinking, this tool looks like it should be used by professionals to design UIs for phone apps and websites, and I'm just simply a noob trying to create a Roblox game. Or some of you might be thinking, is it really worth to use an entirely different tool instead of building my GUIs inside of Roblox? Before we even get into the tutorial section of this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick preview into using this tool. Figma is incredibly simple to use. You have these different buttons up top. This first one is sort of different objects that you can create. So we have frame, selection, and slice. Then we have another tool which allows us to create different shapes. And then we also have a text tool as well. Now, one of the objects that we can create is called a frame. Where do we know that name from? Well, we literally know it from Roblox. So we're going to go ahead and select the frame. And a frame is basically like a shape tool. So we can drag it around, resize it however we want to. Now we want to add a color to this frame so that we can actually see it. We'll go ahead and apply a fill to it, which is basically simply just a background color three. Now that we've applied a fill to it, we can go ahead and change the color if we want to. We can modify the corner radius to round the corners, which gives us a similar effect to a UI corner object. Then let's go ahead and actually add some text inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and make our text say hello you win then we can go ahead and set the font to fredoka1 we can also resize it a little bit then we can center it in the middle of the frame and now going back to the frame we can even easily add a stroke to it as well and we can enlarge the stroke a little bit we'll just make it really big then using a plugin called figma to roblox we can select our brand new gui that we just created click convert selection save this file to our computer then we can go into roblox studio and once we insert this file into our game, we can see that a screen GUI is created along with the frame, the text label, and our frame has a UI stroke as well as a UI corner applied to it as well. Now, I understand that the GUI that we just created is not the best looking. What I hope you took away from that is Figma is a very simple and easy to use tool for creating GUIs just as we would in Roblox Studio. Not only is it even easier to use than Roblox Studio, but it also provides a ton more tools that we can actually use to more easily create our GUIs and be even more precise in all of the different parts that we're creating. And in addition to Figma just being a better version of Roblox Studio, it also almost requires zero effort to transfer your UI directly from Figma and right into Roblox Studio. With all that being said, hopefully I was able to convince you to give Figma a try. If you are wanting to give Figma a try, there will be a link down below in the description, or you can go to figma.com. Once you're on their website, you can either click login or get started for free at the top right hand corner of the screen, depending on if you already have an account on this website or not. And of course, if you don't have an account already, then just go through the short registration process. Now, once you've either created an account or logged into the website, you should be taken to a page that looks pretty similar to this. Now, this is the files page, which shows you all the files that you've worked on in Figma. Now, once you're finished with this video, I would definitely recommend coming back to this page and checking out the Figma basics file, because that's a pretty good introduction to using the tools inside of here, and it may cover some of the tools that we don't even cover today. Anyways, with that all being said, let's go ahead and create our first file. To create our first file, we're going to look towards the top right-hand corner of the screen and go ahead and click on design file. And once you've created your first file, you should be taken to a screen that looks looks like this. Now, let's quickly touch on the layout of what we're actually seeing. How Figma is set up can very easily be compared to Roblox Studio. So towards the top of our screen, we have our top bar. Towards the left, we can actually click this icon right here, and it shows us a bunch of different options that you would generally see in any program whenever you click the logo at the top left. Right beside that icon, still on the top bar, we have a bunch of different tools that we can actually use. So this first tool is around moving objects and also scaling them. Then we kind of have a shape tool, but it's definitely a little bit more advanced than shapes. Here's another shape tool. Here's a pen and pencil tool. We also have some text. We have components, plugins, widgets, so some more tools. And then there's a couple of other things there as well. Towards the middle, we can actually see where this project is stored and what the name of it is. Then we can look towards the left side of the screen for this white box right here. Now, you can think of this box on the left side as sort of our explorer panel. So in Roblox Studio, when we're creating GUIs, the explorer will visualize to us our screen GUIs, the frames inside of them, and everything inside of those. So that's what the box on the left-hand side is right here. This is where it will display all of our frames, all of our elements and different things like that. And then the white box on the right hand side of the screen can be thought of as our properties panel. So currently one of the properties that we're actually able to edit is 
change the page color, which is kind of just this middle spot right here. So if we wanted to, we could change it to something like red or a bright white, black, or anything else like that. Or we could even hide the color as well if we wanted to. And of course, as we select different objects, more properties will appear here that we can actually modify for that specific object. And finally, the window in the middle can be thought of as our canvas. So this is where we'll see and actually construct our GUI. Now that we have a basic understanding of our workspace, let's go ahead and start creating our first GUI. Now, before we actually start creating our first GUI, let's go ahead and actually create our canvas. So what I'm gonna do is select the frame tool at the top left. Then in our properties panel, we can actually see a bunch of different presets, which are actually sizes that we can just select from. And then that size frame will be automatically created in our canvas. Now the size that I'm actually looking for is 1920 by 1080. So that's in the presentation section and we can go ahead and select that one. Once we select that one, we can actually see that a white rectangle was placed in the center of our screen. We can also see that this object has been added to our Explorer. And since this object is automatically selected, we can also see all the different properties that we're able to change with this. Now, the first thing that I actually wanna do is modify the position property of this frame because we wanna position this at zero, zero. So we're gonna set the X to zero and then we're also gonna set the Y to zero as well. Now we can see that it has moved a little bit and if we wanna easily move our camera to be able to view the entire frame, all we have to do is double click on the frame icon inside of the Explorer. And once we double click that, we can actually see our camera is basically panned over to it. Now, next, what we're going to do is actually rename this frame. And I'm going to go ahead and call this frame GUIs. Now, the reason that we created this frame is because we're going to use it as a canvas. And the reason that we made it 1920 by 1080 is because that's the base size that we're going to design our UI at. And then we'll use a module inside of Roblox to automatically scale the GUI up or down depending on the player's devices. In addition to that, creating this frame also allows us to easily display different backgrounds inside of here, which we can use and cycle through to see how our GUI looks on different backgrounds. So this background, for example, is simply just a screenshot taken inside of Roblox Studio of just the sky. And now if you do want this specific background, there is a link down below in the description, which will give you a copy of my Figma file that we're going to be working through and completing, and you'll have your own version of at the end. But if you do want to get this specific background instead of taking your own screenshot, then you can go down below in the description and grab it directly from there. Anyways, now that we have our backgrounds inside of there, the next thing that we're going to do is create another frame, and that frame is going to be used to actually start working on our GUI. So we're going to go ahead and select the frame tool once again, then we can click inside of our canvas and drag this around a little bit to actually set the size of the shape that we're going to create. Now, the size that I want to go with is 650 by 350. And of course, if you're unable to achieve this by dragging around the actual rectangle, you can just go ahead and insert the frame and then modify the width and height right here. So now that we have this frame sized correctly, let's go ahead and add a fill to this. And by adding a fill to this, that's the equivalent of changing its background color three. So then we can go ahead and click on the color and we can set this to whatever color we actually want to. And the color that I'm gonna go with is this blue right here. So now that we can visibly see the frame on our screen, let's go ahead and center this both horizontally and vertically by using the icons towards the top of our properties. So we can click center there and center there. And now this is centered horizontally and vertically. So now that we've repositioned this, let's go ahead and add a stroke around this. So we can go ahead and click on stroke and we can now see that a black stroke has been added around it. But one thing to keep in mind with Figma stroke is their default stroke is set to inside and Roblox doesn't actually have an inside or outside stroke. By default, Roblox just uses outside. So we wanna make sure that we set our stroke from inside to outside so that it recreates exactly what it should look like inside of Roblox. In addition to changing its mode, we can also change the size of it as well. So we can drag this over a little bit to make it a little bit larger. You can modify these strokes per side, but I would not recommend doing that because you're not able to easily convert this setting to into Roblox Studio. You'd have to do a lot of work inside of Roblox Studio to sort of recreate that feature. But another thing that we want to do with the stroke is we want to modify its advanced settings. So we're going to click on the three dots right there because we want to actually set these strokes join mode from the default miter over to round. And the reason that we're setting it to round is because we are also going to round the corners of this frame as well. And without the stroke mode being round, when we import this into Roblox Studio, the stroke will look a little odd when it is not set to round. Anyways, the stroke is now all good to go. Let's go ahead and round the corners a little bit on this frame. And we can actually do that by adjusting the property directly below its height, which is called corner radius. So we're going to go ahead and drag this over a little bit and we can see the corners getting more and more round. And I'm going to set mine to 20. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with creating this frame. Let's go ahead and rename it from frame one just to simply be called frame. And the next one I'm going to do is go ahead and add a text label inside of here. So similar to the frame tool, we can actually drag this out to set the size of it. Although the size of the text doesn't exactly matter, and you'll see why in a second. For the text of this, I'm going to say, would you like to buy another house? And now let's go ahead and modify some properties of this text label. So inside of the text section, we'll first start off by modifying the font. And I'm going to go with Fredoka 1. In addition to that, we're going to go ahead and increase the font size from 12. And I'm going to go with about 52. 
Now here's a little interesting property. It's actually the text size mode. By default, the text size mode is fixed size. So if we were to adjust the width of this text label, we can see that the text is laid out differently. But now rather than saying with fixed size, I'm actually gonna go with auto height. And now that we've set it to auto height, we can play around with the width and we can see that once we play around with the width, the height is automatically adjusted for us. In addition to that, I want the text to be center aligned. So let's go ahead and update that property just like that. I also wanna add a stroke inside of here as well. So let's go ahead and add a stroke to that. I think I'm gonna set the stroke size to about three. And now that we have our text label looking pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and center this horizontally. And since we're pretty much done with this text label, I'm gonna actually go ahead and rename this to be called description. Now that we have our text label created, the next thing that this GUI needs is some buttons. Now to create a button, the first tool you might think to use is actually the shape tool or more specifically the rectangle tool. But I'd actually almost recommend against using any of these shape tools. I mean, more specifically any of these except for the rectangle or place image tools because none of these shapes are natively in Roblox Studio, so you can't automatically convert them into Roblox Studio. If you did want to use these tools, what I'd more so recommend is creating whatever you're wanting to create, then saving that as an image, and then uploading that to Roblox Studio and using it that way. But anyways, we would not actually use the rectangle tool, and instead, we would again create another frame. Now, when it comes to using the frame tool, you can think of it as very similar to the rectangle shape tool, but rather than just being a basic rectangular shape, it can do much more, such as hold other objects inside of it, like a text label, for example. But if we were to use just the rectangle shape tool, we would actually be unable to put the text label inside of there, so that's why we wanna use a frame. Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and use our frame tool and lay out a basic rectangle for creating our button. Now, the size that I'm gonna go with is 170 by 70, so let's go ahead and update that. Then let's go ahead and add a fill to this. First, I'm gonna create a green button, so let's go ahead and set the fill to that green color just like that. Then, of course, we'll add a stroke to to this set the stroke to outside maybe we'll make it five probably but instead we'll probably go with three again i'm going to set the mode to round and then i'm going to actually round the bun itself a little bit so we'll set this to about 15 cool and now our bun is looking pretty decent and now that we have the bun background pretty much finished let's go ahead and add some text to it and how are we going to add some text to it well let's actually just go ahead and duplicate our description text label so we can select it and click Control d then we can drag that inside of our frame and now that our text is inside of this frame let's go ahead and center slash reposition it so that we can actually see it easier and for the text of this we're actually going to say yes then i'm going to change this to auto width and also auto height so now it's been completely resized for us i'll then bring the font size down a little bit as well so we'll go with a 46 and then we want to center it again so let's go ahead and do that and that's looking pretty good and then we can rename this text label if we want to i'm going to name it title just because that's what i'm used to and that's what i usually name the text label that's inside of buns when i'm working in roblox studio anyway and then let's also rename the frame that's holding this text label as well so that would be the button frame itself and we're going to rename this button to be called yes but then we're going to add a space and then we're going to say text bun now make sure you capitalize the t and the b in text bun and it's all one word the reason for that is because when we use the figma plugin to convert this into roblox studio any of the elements inside of our Explorer that contain the name of a Roblox GUI element will automatically be converted into that specific element. Now, if we did not include text bun inside of here, then this would just appear as a frame when instead we want it to be a text bun. Anyways, now we're pretty much done with creating this text bun, but we want to go ahead and add another one so that we can have a yes and no bun. So let's go ahead and duplicate this text bun. And now that we have two, let's go ahead and move one over so that we can actually see it. Now, there's a couple of different ways to move things around. Of course, if you do have the move tool selected, then whatever objects you have selected, you can click with your mouse and then actually move that around with your mouse. Or you can use your arrow keys as well. So if we hold down the right arrow key, we can see that this is being moved over to the right. If we want to move it a little bit faster, we can actually hold the shift key down and then use the arrow keys to make it move a little bit faster. So when we hold shift down, it'll actually move 10 pixels at a time instead of one. Anyways, don't get too stuck up on the positioning here because we are actually going to auto position our buns in a minute. But first, we're going to go ahead and create our second bun before we automatically position position them. So first, we're going to go ahead and rename this bun to be called no. Let's then go ahead and update the text to say no as well. And now it should already be centered, but I always like to do that again, just to make sure that it definitely is. And then one of the only other things that we really need to do here is change the background color. And let's go ahead and set that to a red. So now that we've created both those buns, we want to be able to easily position them. And luckily for us, Figma makes this extremely easy to do. So what we're going to do is select both of our buns inside of our Explorer, and then we're going to right click and then select frame selection. And now what that does is it basically puts both those elements that we had highlighted inside of a single frame. And now if we have the frame selected, we can actually look at the different properties of this frame. And we actually have a property called auto layout. 
Let's go ahead and click this plus icon next to it so that we can begin using it. Now the auto layout system is extremely useful. It has a couple of different modes. So the first mode is vertical layout, which means that elements inside of this frame will be automatically laid out vertically. We can also swap it to horizontal, which is the one that we're going to want. And then we can also set it to wrap as well, which depending on the amount of elements that you had, that is when wrapping would actually take effect. Anyways, like I said, we're going to want to go ahead and set ours to horizontal. And then below the mode, we actually have the horizontal gap property right here, which we can modify to change how much spacing is in between both of these elements. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to 75. And now that we've set up the auto layout property, what we're then going to do is center this frame horizontally so that both the buns are positioned how we would want them to be. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have our frame selected. And then let's go ahead and horizontally center that. And now that we've done that, our buns are appearing very nicely. They're evenly spaced and they're positioned nicely as well. Of course, we can modify some properties in the auto layout to change how they appear. If we want there to be more space in between the two, or if we want less space in between the two, we can of course decide all of those but I'm going to leave mine at 75 because I think that's looking pretty good. Anyways, since we're pretty much done with setting those up, I'm going to go ahead and rename this frame to be called buns, of course, because it holds both of our buns inside of it. Now we are almost completely finished, but the last thing that I want to do is go back to our original frame, which holds all these elements inside of it. And I want to actually add an auto layout to here as well in order to modify how the description and buns are laid out so that we can easily adjust the spacing between them, around them, and different things like that. So now that the main frame has auto layout enabled, by default, it actually set the mode to vertical layout which is the one that we're wanting, because if we set this to horizontal, then obviously that would look completely different. In addition to that, it also set our align automatically to top center. Let's just play around with this to see what this actually does. So if we set this to align top left, we can see that the buns are repositioned. And if we set it to align top right or any of the top rights or the top lefts, we can also see them move as well. Now I'm going to set mine to align center, which effectively does the same thing as align top center because of how our frame is actually set up. Anyways, though, instead of being able to adjust the horizontal gap, since our mode is set to vertical, we can adjust the vertical gap between these two items right here. So we can actually increase this if we want there to be a space between the description and the buns, or we can decrease it if we want there to be less of a space. We also have a horizontal padding property right here, which we can actually adjust to modify the size of the frame surrounding these two elements. So we can adjust that horizontally or we can adjust that vertically as well. But now with all that being said, for the final results, I'm going to go with 40 for the vertical gap and then 50 for both the horizontal and vertical padding. Then let's go ahead and make sure this frame is centered. So we're going to center that horizontally and vertically, although it already does seem to be that way. So that's good to go. And now we've pretty much created this entire GUI, but there's one last thing that we want to do before we export this and import it in Roblox Studio. And that is that we want to select our frame. We want to right click it and then we want to frame the selection. Now we're not actually going to make really any changes to this frame except for when it comes to the name. I'm gonna call this confirmation because inside of Roblox, this is gonna be our confirmation GUI that we're gonna use for whenever a player is trying to purchase something. So I am normally gonna call this confirmation, but in addition to that, we wanna include screen GUI in the name as well, so that when we import this into Roblox Studio, we'll automatically have our frame and everything else inside of there wrapped and stored inside of a screen GUI, which is what we need to store the frame inside of anyway. So doing this step right here will just save us a step of actually creating the screen GUI, because if we were to export and then import this frame, we would be importing a frame, which still would need a screen GUI created for it. So you don't need to add the screen GUI here, but you certainly can if you want to. And that's what I normally do anyway. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and export this GUI. In order to export this GUI, we need to use a plugin inside of Figma. And to access the plugins inside of Figma, we want to click this icon right here, which is called resources. Once we've clicked it, it'll display components, plugins, and widgets to us. Of course, we want to click on plugins. And then inside of plugins, we want to search for Roblox. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, the results might appear a little bit differently, but I will also leave a link down below in the description to the plugin that you should use. You can use Figma to Roblox, or you can use Figma to Roblox Fork, which is actually a plugin that I published. Basically, Figma to Roblox was created and it is used by 975 other people. But when I discovered it recently, I realized that the plugin isn't being maintained anymore. It had a couple of issues and it was lacking some features. So I downloaded the repository, made some changes to it, and then made a pull request on GitHub to the original creator. But after two weeks, the original creator still has not responded to any of those requests. So it seems like they've gone completely inactive, which is the reason why I republished another version of their plugin to Figma with the new features, improvements, and bug fixes all included inside of it. So with that all being said, we're going to go ahead and use my version, but of course you can still use the other version that just might be slightly different. So I'm going to go ahead and click on run on this version which should then open up a screen that looks pretty similar to this. And we're going to ignore every single thing inside of here, except for the convert selection button. So again, we want to make sure that we have the confirmation screen GUI frame selected. We're then going to click the convert selection button, and then we can save that RBXMX file onto our computer. And now we are done with Figma. So now hopping over to Roblox Studio, I just opened up a fresh base plate. And now let's go ahead and import that GUI directly inside of here. So to easily do this, I'm going to right click on starter GUI and select insert from file. 
I'll then find wherever I saved that file, select it, click on open, and we should see that file directly imported inside of Roblox Studio. And once we've imported it, we should see the GUI appear right in front of our eyes. Now there's two things to keep in mind. If your GUI looks very different, remember we created that on a 1920 by 1080 canvas. So you wanna make sure that your screen size is the exact same. And in order to do that, you can click on the test tab, click device, which will allow us to emulate different device screen sizes. And then we're gonna set that to HD 1080, 1920 by 1080. So that should all be good to go. In addition to that, our GUI does look a little bit different, which this is kind of an embarrassing and kind of a bad example to show off, but I am still trying to improve the plugin a little bit, make different changes to make it a little bit better. Again, depending on when you're watching this video, this change might have already been made to completely fix this and you won't even have to deal with this at all. But one of the recent features that I try to add to this is when we actually use padding on different objects inside of Figma, I try to include that padding inside of Roblox Studio, which sometimes just doesn't work out exactly how I wanted it to. So I haven't gone through all the edge cases and everything like that. But the fix to this is extremely simple. All we do, open up our frame. And if we see a UI padding inside of here, just delete it. And as soon as we delete it, we can see that our GUI looks exactly how we want it to look. So now if we look inside of the frame itself, we can see how this entire thing is set up and recreated inside of Roblox Studio. So our frame is a normal frame. This is the size of it. This is the position of it. This is the background color of it. We have the UI corner set up with the corner radius of 20 pixels. We have the UI stroke set up with the line join mode around and the thickness being five. We then have the buns frame. Inside of the buns frame, we do have both of these buns inside of here. And inside of the buns, we also have a UI corner, a UI stroke, and a title text label as well. And of course, inside the title text label, we have another stroke inside of it too. In addition to that, we have the description text label with the UI stroke inside of that as well. So all of that is looking pretty good. Now, for the most part, importing this in Roblox Studio is pretty much effortless. Depending on the things that you are creating, like if you do use a UI grid layout or if you're using a scrolling frame, certain things like that, you will have to make your own adjustments to. Like I said, though, I am trying to make adjustments to the plugin to make certain things like that easier and incorporate different workflows. But at the same time, there is so much different variety when it comes to creating GUIs from person to person. So it's really hard to make it work for everybody's workflow process while not negatively impacting others. But still, even with that being said, this will get you 90 to maybe even 99% of the way there, maybe even 100%, really depending on what you're actually creating. There's very few times where you'll actually have to make manual adjustments to them. And even when you do, it should be very, very simple. With all that being said, hopefully I've showed you how you can use Figma to easily create professional looking GUIs for Roblox. I definitely have plans of creating future videos where I actually create the GUI in Figma, then import it into Roblox and script the entire thing. And I think those videos will be extremely helpful and really walk you through every step of the process. With all that being said though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button and I'll see you guys in the next video.